Hi friends, I'm going on a vacation and we need to pack. I like to travel light, so we're only going to pack the bare necessities, such as a box with combed floofs and two hand spindles. And well, that surely isn't enough to quench my crafting needs during the holidays, so some more uncombed fluff and my combs with their protection so they don't shred my backpack apart. And yarn, of course. All ready, let's go. Now, we're talking. As you may notice, my dear friends, I am now relocated to the south of France. Last year I made a video on me spindle spinning on holiday. I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to try to make it a little less cringe. I also cannot promise anything. I thought, well, if I'm going to make it less cringe, then maybe just make a vlog out of it. Don't try to force my vacation crafting into one theme. It's just going to be a holiday crafting vlog. How does that sound to you? Now, as you saw in my little packing clip, I have brought my knitting project, which is the um, right now the sweater for my husband. Got the back panel finished. But I'm not going to be showing much of that in this vlog because I have a separate dedicated video for that. But that's here with me. And then my backpack with the flops and the spindles because when I am on vacation, I am spindle spinning. And I've taken my clasped in hand spindles other than my um, drop spindles this year. I would love to be as proficient in that clasped in hand spindle spinning as I am with drop spindle spinning. And it would be a dream, but of course it's not going to be feasible in two weeks time to be as proficient with it as with a wheel. But you know, set your ambitions high, adjust whenever needed. <laughs> That's what we're going to do in this video. My dearest friends, my guys, gals and my non-binary pals, we are in the south of France. I'm on a holiday, I'm just going to craft and I'm just going to take you along with me. Okay, so I just said that I wasn't going to be cringy this video and theme it like how many different places can I spin my spindle on? But you know, we are in a Gallo-Roman theater, so shenanigans and dramatics are quite fitting here. That was a cool plane. I think the reason why I am not as proficient with this type of spitting is because I am used to drafting with the hand I'm spinning with right now. There's lots of tutorials that actually say to draft with your left hand also when you're spinning on a wheel, which makes sense because then this isn't as awkward. Because I'm actually still drafting with my right hand because I'm pulling the spindle down. It's probably not the right way to do this. But I'm making yarn, so I don't know if I should be concerned about the right way of doing things. I am now standing in what historically would have been called the vomitorium of the theater, the arena. Does this anything have to do with vomit, I hear you ask? Perhaps. But actually, these were the corridors in which the audience went to their places. And as you can see, I've brought my heavier spindle again, not the one that I used 
um, in the German castles that was a smaller lighter weight one this is actually my preferred clasped in hand spindle it's quite a bit heavier but that also means it, um, it has more spinning momentum Felt like my thread broke, but didn't. But it is very weak, though. Huh. Here we have our first skein of this 14 days spindle spinning exercise. Our benchmark, if we will. I didn't plan on it, but coincidentally it also has an entirely different color than all the other flukes that I have brought, so it would be easy to discern this one from all the other ones we make. It's not perfect, but of course that would completely defeat the purpose of this video if it were. <laughs> like even some parts, even though this is spun and plied, that look like it isn't spun at all, and then some <laughs> yeah but as a whole doesn't look as bad as I was actually expecting it to look so yeah this is our benchmark the wool that I'm using right now is the one that I dyed with the ivy berries this was the one dyed without a mordant and I'm almost feeling like the uh, princess in Rumpelstiltskin because it looks like I'm spinning gold well you know normally with this type of spinning one would use a distaff something I do not have or not at my disposal so it would probably benefit my drafting issues on this spin to have one but I don't and my drafting issues mostly involve the twist getting into my uh, fiber supply So I'm only giving my spindle small flicks, drafting small bits. For now it seems to work. It's only the second one in this um, exercise, but this second cup already looks... I need to cover my eyes, of course, or it will focus on me. The second cup already looks quite neat. What do you think? Can we if only just for a little moment appreciate the progress I made in this second skein. And well, we are in France, so for our second a weird place to spin with my hand spindles which are French spindles it's a sunflower field looking only slightly sad I've passed through this region like two or three weeks ago and then they were all yellow and sunny and bright and right now they're drying to be um, actually useful or well, at least their seeds to be useful Ah! My husband and I went on a three-day hike and it seems that when it comes to spinning I am back to square or let's say skein one. Oh, look at this. Can you see it? It's a little yellow 
ladybug on my hand. But yeah, I have to go, friend. <sighs> Thanks. So yeah, my husband and I went on a three-day hike and it kind of looks... I sort of have already forgotten the small technique progress that I had made over the first three days that I had been spinning. The thing is also, um, should have maybe said this earlier, but I'm not used to long draw. I'm always, when I'm like spinning on my wheels, I'm inchworming my way through the fiber. Short forward draw all the way. So now when I'm spin spinning, and this is technically a long draw, that's just extra hard for me, not only the spindle motions, but the long draw, which I am still not really doing correctly since I'm still not using a distaff. And maybe those of you that are older viewers of the channel might ask, but you had a distaff stake, right? What happened to that? And well, um, indeed, I had a distaff stick, but a couple of weeks ago I noticed while it was just laying around in my studio, that there was wood crumbs underneath it. So that meant there were worms in there. And I just threw the whole stick out because I didn't want my wheels and other fiber equipment to get contaminated, naturally. Let's assess the damage done by not spinning for a couple of days. Here is, as you might remember, our very first skein, the both very much overspun and underspun little white skein. And then this is what we have now. Still a little bit overspun, but a much neater, more consistent yarn. It is not as good, I think, as the second skein that we made. Now, however, in second opinion, I can't really tell them apart right now. So maybe it is as good. And then we did not lose a lot of progress. Hey! And here is everything that we have spindle spun so far after one week of holiday in France. These are very, very, very small skeins. But in the end, I am hoping to get enough yarn to make like a hat. An entire spindle spun garment, wouldn't that be nice? Yes, it would, it would, it would very much be nice. So let's go, skein number five, I guess, if I'm counting correctly. Don't like dropping it. It's um, antique. I'm trying to wind a pretty cop. I'm not a master in that art yet. Now, as you can see, this is actually going pretty fast, wouldn't you say so? And that reminds me of a comment I saw on one of the Facebook groups that I am part of that saw a video of someone doing a medieval reenactment and in that medieval reenactment was spinning with a in-hand or clasped spindle. The comment was quite well puzzled and she asked why would anyone ever spin like this when it is clearly not as efficient as spinning on a drop spindle? What is efficiency though? Because I am not convinced that this is less efficient than a drop spindle. It seems slower, but doesn't mean that it actually is. And I feel like I have more control over the twist I am giving with the spindle than if I would have just let gravity do its work. 
Do you have anything to say about that? Efficiency when, sp when spindle spinning. I mean, when you look at medieval pictures, it's not that often a drop spindle. It is more often a hand spindle. And I know we have a tendency to think that we modern people are much more efficient, much smarter, know all the things, and that medieval people are stupid. But they're not. Surprise, surprise, actually. They were very smart because they didn't have as much technology, so they had to do stuff in ways that were more efficient. The fact that you're still holding on to the spindle and that it isn't 100% just depending on gravity makes it more suitable for thinner yarn. It doesn't like weigh down the thread and maybe snap it if you go too thin. I don't know, that's, that's just a thought I had. Um, it is not backed up by any science or anything. It's just what I'm thinking. My reasoning behind that I think that this is just as efficient as well if you pull it too hard it snaps still <laughs> it's because I draft not in the correct way that's just my fault there's nothing to do with the efficiency of this kind of spinning there we go we're back at it anyway so the conclusion of my ramblings was I think this is just as efficient as drop spin spinning but I do want to hear your opinion on it. Here is my futile attempt at making a pretty cup. But the single is pretty consistent. Good morning, my friends. After those five skeins, I thought it was high time to add another variable to the challenge. A different spindle. I was curious to know whether I could spin as consistently on my second spindle. You know, the one I tried first, the one I took with me to Germany, the one that I erroneously first called the one with less momentum. Because it seems, now that I have been intensely using both of them over the past couple of days, that I have been mistaken. This spindle has quite some spunk. Now, I'm also using my uh, second spindle to be able to then make a plying ball with the cups of both spindles and make well, a little bit less tiny of a skein. And I guess that the reason why I thought that this one had less momentum or was not as fast than the big heavy one is probably my inexperience with the motions that you use to make these ones spin. And now that I've got the hang of it, I have the exact flicking motion in my fingers. She flicks like no one's business. I might have slightly, only just slightly overestimated the capacity of my spindle. Let's check out our yarn. That's only slightly overspun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
quite happy with this yarn. It's looking pretty gosh darn consistent if you ask me. I think I have achieved my goal of spinning as good a yarn as I am able to on a drop spindle. This is our box here today. We've got two more bird's nest left and a nice collection of little lovely yarns. Hey, will you stay with your friends? Might just come some more for the rest of my holiday. A fine evening, my friends. I am going to recap a little bit of my day because I suck at vlogging, apparently. Um, today we went to a Neolithic site with five tumuli and it had a prehistoric museum as well and I was happy to see that they also included, included the uh, Neolithic craft. And there is a mosquito, get away! Uh, anyway, <laughs> Neolithic crafts. There was reconstructions of looms, of weavings, facsimile of spindle whirls, and there was one example of a bone spindle stick, which was so amazing. I actually regretted not taking my own spindle to the museum and just spinning in the museum. I felt so connected to those people in the fifth millennium before our common era, just by seeing their tools of the craft, which so much resembled my own. That really, it was a pity that I couldn't spin next to those spinning and weaving materials. So, because I was so inspired, I did take my spindle on a little trip to a medieval castle, which puts our tally of strange places to spin on, on three, I think, right now, for this year. It's, I, I don't know, I felt amazing looking at those ancient spinning tools. Just like, ah, we cannot for sure 100% know how they spun, but they for, sh for certain spun and they spun a lot by hand. Because that's the only way that there was thread, yarn, cloth. It's a thing we as humanity have been doing since the dawn, not even of civilization, but the dawn of humanity. Like the, the tumuli we visited, fifth millennium before our common era. Pretty impressive. And right now, it's 2023. An unbroken thread spun through the ages on spindles. Thinking about how long this video is going to be. Like I realized that my Tour de Vlies vlogs were like close to half an hour each, or like over 20 minutes at least. And I vlogged for four days at maximum in each and we're getting near the 10 days now, I think. Or at least a week, more than a week. Anyway, you're not going to complain about a longer video now, are you? And if you are, do so in the comments. So as the sun is setting here in beautiful south of France, the final sun actually of our holiday here, I am spinning my final centimeters of yarn. For my final yarn I chose this baby blue, sky blue, um, indigo dyed myself, just to really mark off the last skein so that I can visualize my progress of the last 14 days immediately. Like the first one is a different color and the last one is a different color. Now over those two weeks, except for this, which still needs to be plied, this is what I spun.
Tomorrow when we're back in Belgium, I can count all of this, weigh it and give you the total tally of what we have done. If you don't remember, this was our first one. Now with the evening passing by, I'm going to ply these two together and um, I'll see you tomorrow back in Belgium. I'm back! which means we're going to be fully engrossed with our spinning wheels yet again. But of course, before we do that, we have to measure what we did with our spindle. We have got eight little skeins of spindle spun yarn. And then two bits that were extra when making a plying ball. They're really tiny, but I'm going to count them in anyway. Ye olde nidi nodi, and I'm going to put them on the swift and count how many revolutions I can make on the nidi nodi. Our first skein, the wild one, the one that we spun first, is eight revolutions around the nidi nodi. Now we need to put out our calculator. So this would be 11 meters. I'm going to continue doing this for all the skeins and then I'll come back to you. The numbers are in. This is a beautiful 175 meters of yarn. Now, if you were ever curious to what two meters of yarn looks like as a skein after being on a nidi nodi that is over one meter long, this is it. Your questions have been answered. And now to answer my question, did I get as consistent as I am on a drop spindle? And this is drop spindle spun and this is clasped spindle spun. Yeah, yeah, I think I did up my game. What do you say? Which is the better looking scale number two? So friends, that was our extensive spindle spinning adventure for this year. Or maybe not. Maybe this adventure isn't over. Because I said I would like an entire spindle spun garment. Now, I'm thinking maybe a hat or something. But even for a hat, 175 meters is not nearly enough. So I'll have to spin more, I guess. But that will be for another video. Anyway, I have found so much trust and newfound joy in these two spindles. But of course, these aren't the only ones I have. So I think I also want to dive into the collection of spindles that I have. Now, I know for sure that I won't be spinning on this one because this one has a metal tip and I am very sensitive to, the to my fingers smelling like metal. It is something I cannot handle. So this will just be a pretty to look at spindle. But all the rest, be warned, I am going to try them. That is a thread or maybe a promise, that's up to you. Anyway, all that there rests for me to say right now is if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans and maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But of course, that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. Bye.